well, what, what has he done wrong? He's right. just kind of doing what the network tells him to do, yeah. you know? They say, Jay, go to 10. Yeah, okay, not a bad idea. Right. <laughs> so they, they, say, they say, Jay, all right, Jay, the 10 o'clock didn't work. Come back to 1130. Okay, sure, if that's what you want. Right. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 337. It's the third week of May of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have uh, so much to talk about this week. (laughs) And so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. So, AEW Collision. Begins on June seventeenth mm-hmm. from a mystery location. Yes, CM Punk is not affiliated with <laughs> AEW Saturday Night Collision, according to Warner Brothers Discovery. Mm-hmm. CM Punk. CM Punk. <laughs> CM Punk. Well, it looks like there's been a snag in the AEW CM Punk relationship. Yet again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This time, the reported snag is that CM Punk wants a steal at the arena. At collision tapings. Mm -hmm. And he revealed to House of Wrestling this week that Ace Steel was secretly rehired by (laughs) AEW months ago. (laughs) And Punk was under the impression that he would be allowed to be at buildings and then Apparently this week, Ace and or Punk were told, you know, uh, Ace tried to bite a guy, or Ace bit a guy. Oh, he did. (laughs) And uh, he threw a chair at somebody, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, he's not going to be allowed out of the buildings no more. (laughs) Instead... And uh, and uh, and this apparently caused CM Punk to say, "Well, maybe I am not going to be a part of Collision after all." Mm-hmm. He was pulled from promotional uh, posters, uh, graphics. He was not mentioned. Warner Brothers Discovery was specifically asked about CM Punk. And they said he's not affiliated. He doesn't work here. He's not affiliated with the show. <laughs> they said we've never heard of CM Punk. Yes. Except this is clearly a last minute change because there was a link on the, the Warner Brothers Discovery website to a press release that mentioned CM Punk and the link listed CM Punk in it. But they uh, they had changed it, but it was still cashed or whatever and uh and i there's so much stuff with this <laughs> i don't even know where to start or stop anyway aw collision debuts saturday june 17th from a mystery location and cm punk may or may not be there and cm punk is also very mad at brian alvarez that's right uh <laughs> it's always something new with this guy uh-huh um well you know <laughs> I've known <laughs> CM Punk <laughs> for yes. almost 20 years. Yes. Uh yeah, this is uh this is what I w- this is what I would call vintage vintage punk. Uh <laughs> to if you want to look at this uh from a pro a pro fill side, um he has he will probably never have more leverage than he has at this exact moment 
they are launching a new show that was meant to be built around him as the top guy on it. Yeah. And so if there's a time to make demands, uh, this is the time. And he is certainly not the first star in professional wrestling to make demands of a promoter and threaten or imply that he will not show up if his demands are not met. Um, Hail as old as time. Exactly. He's the first man who is so incredibly online and constantly furious at the podcasters to do it. Maybe. Yes. Um, which is why this is this is so much fun uh, <laughs> to witness, um, especially when he goes on these little these little uh, written tirades on his Instagram stories, and then he uh, he hits us with some epic bacon lines like "Go touch grass," and people are taking this too seriously. Um, beautiful man. Uh, no, he's uh, this is this is this is the CM Punk experience. He's a very dynamic and fun to watch television character. Uh, the shows that he is on are generally better when he's there, but uh, you know, generally speaking, it's 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 always going to end this way. It seems there's always going to be some bumps in the road. Um, they apparently delayed the announcement. They were supposed to announce, as you said, that CM Punk was back for this collision show. And Tony Khan had uh, announced an announcement for Dynamite this week. And his announcement was that next week there will be an announcement that uh, to the location of Collision, the first episode of Collision. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we hit the snooze button on this one. Uh, yeah. And we get one more week to try to uh, iron out all the details. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps there is a compromise here. Perhaps, perhaps a steel could come to the building, but he has to wear a muzzle, you know, Makes uh, sense. or that, that thing that uh, Hannibal Lecter wore, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just so- something to keep them chompers in check, you know? Sure. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like again, punk, Punk's holding up the promoter to get a better deal for him and his friends. It happens. It doesn't usually happen so blatantly in the public eye while <laughs> random wrestling podcasters are catching strays due to beefs of what those wrestling pa- podcasters wrote in their newsletter about a guy in like 2007. But, you know, this is this is pro wrestling. This is as pro wrestling as it gets, right? Yes. And a question that I think may be raised is, and I'll ask you what you think, and then I'll tell you what I think. Mm-hmm. Why do you think CM Punk has leverage if he's under contract and um, theoretically should be able to be told, well, you're, you're, you're showing up at this building on this date and you will perform as you are contracted to. Well, I think the most obvious answer, uh, not including like potential legal action that he thinks perhaps he could take, is that he's he's the biggest star in the company. Sure. And the, the success of a Saturday night two-hour live show uh, is pretty much entirely going to be tied to him being on the show, I would think. So... Uh, like, I mean, star power was the first reason that came to mind. Um, and then potential potential long legal fights that end with him going to somebody else's television show uh, and wrestling for them would also, uh, I guess, be on the list down the road. But uh, tell me what you think. I immediately thought of legal battles. Mm hmm. Whether or not they barged in to his locker room, executives within the in this wrestling company mm-hmm. entered CM Punk's locker room and he felt threatened. Mm-hmm. And that sounds like a lawsuit. 
and it sounded like a lawsuit for the eight months that this has been going on. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that certainly is, that's hung over all of this thing. Uh, You know, Ed, to his credit, hey, see a punk's undefeated (laughs) in suing or being sued by wrestling companies. Sure. Um, So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to sue the guy, even if I had, you know, con family money or get sued by the guy um yeah that's there could be there could be a lot of red tape that goes into this um so yeah i i the combination of that and like like we said that his the show is built for him now the other side of this is to look at this and go bro you're getting an entire show built just for you with all of your friends on it you never have to see the people that you hate ever again because they'll be on the other show and you're going to th- blow this up at the 11th hour for a steal. <laughs> yep. But their CM Punk obviously fashions and fancies himself a very loyal man. <laughs> as long as you as long as he perceives that you are loyal to him. Sure. He will be very loyal to you. Very generous. Yeah. Um, as again, as long as you, as long as he feels you have stayed loyal to him, um, and clearly he's, you know, he he feels he's standing up for his friend. And and in the uh, the the House of Wrestling uh, press release, it was also noted that it was a it was a uh, some miscommunications between the lawyers. Speaking of legal troubles that led to punk being pulled from all the advertising and uh, that, that punk is really hoping to still help the, uh, you know, help the company in any way he can, uh, which is why he went on Instagram and said, he couldn't believe that uh, he made a joke about them hiring his dog and said he couldn't believe it because he actually has experience. It would be good in the role, which doesn't seem like something you do if you're want to help the company you work for, but that's, you know, that's, that's me, you know. It's all part of. I'm sure, it's all part of the game, you know. We're just, we're just having fun. We're just poking fun. We're playing a trick. <laughs> it's, it's how there was. Okay, let me quote, read from the piece here. Mm-hmm. Quote: There was an understanding in place that once AEW Collision debuted, Steel would return to the road for AEW, working as an agent on that brand. However, on Tuesday. The decision was made not to bring Steel back on the road with the promotion, and Punk learned of it shortly after. Following that, there was some miscommunication between lawyers, and subsequently, Punk was pulled from the collision announcement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? The, what? Sounds like you should get better lawyers. That's a pretty big snafu, I gotta say. <laughs> To pull the biggest star and scrub him from every piece of advertising and every press release? That's a big oops. <laughs> the way the chain of events is laid out there, it's like there's not even like it's not even pl- the story you're going with isn't even plausible. <laughs> like what? I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, uh, also all of the uh, all of the problem children are going to be assigned to. The Collision brand. Miro's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thunder Rosa's going to be there. Uh, Scorpio Sky apparently is going to be there. Andrade El Idolo, who immediately tweeted that he had, this was news to him, was told <laughs> that he will be on the uh, on the Collision brand on Saturdays. He had a uh, surgery to repair a torn pack in November. At the end of November, right after Thanksgiving, I guess. So, uh, six months, you would think he would be about ready to come back from that, but uh, maybe three more months. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so a lot of stars, a uh, a uh, mm. Mm. <laughs> they're getting their own little island uh, okay. away. You keep Sammy on one show, you keep Andrade on the other show keep the bucks on one show you theoretically keep punk on the other show and 
and uh and 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 hair and bald can go to punk show punk that's can right custody. punk can get custody of those guys um and then i guess we we haven't really gotten confirmation yet like there's there's been talk scuttlebutt that there's a a brand split of sorts maybe not an official one with a draft like wwe does but um, but that the champions would probably be on whatever show they needed to be on. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there was some miscommunication between the lawyers that led <laughs> to see the biggest star in the company being scrubbed from every single promotional piece about the show. As, as they lay out the chain of events, the chain of events that led to this quote unquote miscommunication. <laughs> like, well, Ace was uh Ace was gonna be back on the road, and then the decision was made Tuesday not to bring him back on the road. Punk learned a bit shortly after. After that, there was some miscommunication. <laughs> yeah, you you'd think like if you were trying to really uh sell this. Uh, you would be like, oh, Punk didn't even know that Ace was not when was not going to be allowed at the building. You know, this was this all caught caught him off guard completely. But hey, maybe I guess maybe this is just this is the way the man the man and his his team uh, view the events of having occurred. I, I I'm certainly not prepared to call the man a liar. Uh... <laughs> sure. Sure. For legal reasons. Yes. Um, so that's that's what's cooking. <laughs> yep. That's that's the latest on CM Punk and AEW collision and uh and all of these things. Also, um, just this is now the second time in uh less than ten years that uh the the president of the second largest wrestling company in the world has secretly rehired someone uh that had been fired to secretly work in creative i can't think of the other uh dixie and russo oh right right right, 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 right. okay okay i i was thinking that you were mentioned you were specifically oh, the talking second time about tony had done it yeah, oh, yeah. i was like oh, okay yeah yeah it's great absolutely fantastic we have uh we can uh wrap up the aw talk here with talking about the actual product mm-hmm. the least interesting part of aw yes currently we have what i like to call vintage tony khan um <laughs> pay-per-view build here where the television for the first 10 weeks in between pay-per-views is uh dull and then they stomp the pedal down in the last two weeks on the way to the show and so they have uh, a bunch of new matches announced for double or nothing which is coming up next sunday and there will be jamie hater versus tony storm there will be Orange Cassidy in a 21-man blackjack battle royal. There will be Wardlow versus Christian Cage in a ladder match. Um, already announced were FTR versus Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and the Four Pillars four-way. Uh, the Blackpool Combat Club will be facing the Elite. The Elite are back together. Mm-hmm. They'll be facing off in an Anarchy in the Arena match. And uh, not announced yet, but being announced on Friday's TV is Jay Cargill versus uh, Ty Valkyrie for the TBS championship. So, um, Jamie and Tony kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, it di- it didn't because their respective groups have been feuding for months and months and months. Right. Um, but you would have thought maybe that would that was building to a blood and guts or something down the road and maybe it still is but the blackjack battle royal came out of nowhere Wardlow versus christian in a ladder match uh they've been kind of still playing that for for months um sure why not and uh christian attacked Wardlow with a ladder um 
it had been a few weeks since they made uh, Wardlow look like a cuckold on TV. <laughs> so they got back on that on, on TV this week. And uh, Christian beat him up with the ladder. And uh, the anarchy in the arena, well, we're just kind of waiting on the final piece here, which is the elite getting all back together, which uh, they are now. And they will have a uh, a weapons match. So uh, thoughts on build to double or nothing. There were things I really liked about this week's show. I really liked the elite angle at the end. Um, I, in general, like I didn't think a lot of what they did. They gave, you know, all three of the challengers got a match and got a win. Although we can, we can talk about the jungle Jack Perry match. Uh, oh, I have a lot of thoughts on that yeah. in a second here, but like overall, yeah, they, they hit, they hit on stuff for the pay-per-view they were originally going to do the the six the six woman tag, which to me felt like I thought genuinely I thought that might be the pay per view match because it yeah. didn't as you pointed out they hadn't really built any challengers for Jamie, yeah, seemingly. Um, but they they fudged not really fudged some numbers because I guess they were they ran a couple house shows over the weekend. But Tony Storm won four matches in five days or something, and so a record. He, uh, an AEW record, and so she's getting the title shot. Fine, it's fine. Like it'll be a good match. We've seen that match before. It was good. It'll be good again. Um, so that's that's all well and good. Um, but there was some real, there was some real like uh, third hour of Raw stuff, <laughs> like third hour of Vince Raw stuff on this sure. show. I thought um, one being Jack Perry, who's going for the world title. Uh, and the idea is theoretically you give him a big win on his way to the wrestling for the championship, but uh, you don't really want to push the guy. So instead he gets his ass kicked for 99% of the match and then cheats to win and then gets his ass kicked some more. He he wrestled Roosh and Roosh beat the ever loving S word out of him. Mm hmm. It was like, wow, I I think Roosh should be wrestling for the championship. <laughs> yeah. Week. And then he held the tights, and then Jungle Boy needed to hold the tights to beat him. It wasn't even like Roosh had held the tights, and this was like comeuppance. You know how like like Dusty or Hogan would right. cheat occasionally to, you know, after the heel had cheated. It's like, no, he right. just he just he had no other way to win. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Also, uh, Tony Khan loves trying to make Sammy Guevara a baby face, <laughs> even though I realized they were in his home state of Texas and Tony wants to try to make hometown heroes in his wrestling company. And so maybe Sammy was just it was just a baby face for the night kind of thing. But Sammy Guevara was in like three segments or four segments on dynamite. Uh-huh. And he was a baby face in all of them. And the man with the most punchable face in North America, <laughs> the most natural heel you've ever seen. Sammy Guevara. Tony loves making Sammy Guevara a baby face. He wrestles like a baby face. That's never been the problem. The problem is he is the most annoying human being. <laughs> On wrestling television. Even though, as you pointed out to me, and I am aware because I've seen every episode of the reality show a minimum of two times, <laughs> Sammy and Tay are baby faces on the reality show. Yeah, I think to, to summarize all this, I don't I don't disagree with anything you've just said. Uh, <laughs> the the problem, I think this whole build has run into um, because it's been going a while now, is that does a single person on planet Earth think that any of these three guys are going to be the one to beat MJF? Is MJF going to lose the belt in a four-way? Mm, probably not. No, I think people maybe could buy Darby as a challenger. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought because they did a tag match, just kind of they threw together a match. I guess it was a rematch from one of the house shows they did 
of a big bill and uh, and uh, Lee Moriarty against against uh, Orange Cassidy and Darby and the, they had a really good crowd on on that show and they were really into Darby and it was if it was yeah if anyone there <laughs> of these four should be getting the title shot uh, it should be Darby or as you said probably Roosh but. <laughs> But it just, yeah, the idea of doing the four way, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like, feels like a TV program. Like, yeah, Mac, yeah Max could defend against any of these guys on TV and it would be fine. But it's a pay per view main event. And look, AEW's got a lot of shows that their, you know, their larger hardcore fan base are probably going to travel for this year. So maybe that's why the Vegas tickets aren't moving. And I know it's more expensive to get into Vegas apparently this year than in past years, but they got like a half full building and I don't know what, what's going to move those last, (laughs) you know, 3000 tickets or whatever that they have on sale because, and I, maybe nothing would, like I said, maybe you can blame it all on the, the price of the flights into Vegas and hotels and, and maybe the circus is in town and, and you know, the weather's bad or whatever, but like, feels like that show would have sold out already. If if the product was hot and people, and there was a match on that show that people felt they had to see live and there just isn't. And I think that's reflected. I like, I, and again, I think a lot of the stuff on the show will be good. I'm uh, the, the elite and Blackpool combat club stuff will be good. There'll be a lot of good wrestling on the show, but not, Oh my god, I've got to see this match. Good. <laughs> I guess well, I'm coming to. Maybe for the AEW hardcores, the Anarchy in the Arena match could have been that. Mm-hmm. And then you're giving people uh between 6 and 10 days to buy <laughs> buy flights financially plan for this. Buy flights, buy hotels, buy tickets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. For Memorial Day weekend on top of that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So that's, again, that's, like I said, I, I don't, I just don't, it just doesn't, doesn't feel like a hot, a hot program for your, for your world champion to be in at the moment. And uh, if we can speak about other things that I, I hated on this show, uh, speaking of hometown guys, uh, Ricky Starks was on this show wrestling Jay White, um, and they're just having a match. It's getting pretty good, and then Juice Robinson gets in the ring with a chair, and Ricky Starks just hits Juice, and then he hits Jay with the chair. Um, yeah. And the argument, of course, is, well, you don't want to beat either guy. And like I have often said on this show, like we both often said on this show, um, wrestling is fake. Um, you don't have to book a match where you can't beat either guy if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, and also, if the plan now is, uh, will Ricky need the tag partner? Why does he need a tag partner? Because he beat both those guys' asses <laughs> by yes. himself. So, I don't know. Maybe they'll just do a no DQ match, another no DQ match. There's already a ladder match and a crazy hardcore brawl on that show, but maybe they'll add that to... Uh to the show as well down uh, in the, the last few days there. Sure. Why not? Uh, Ricky Starks, as we know, is uh, from Texas and Louisiana. <laughs> so he has two hometowns. That's right. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Sure. Why not? It's like half the they run Texas like 26 weeks a year. That's a good deal. If you're if you're Ricky. That is true. They can't beat you that many weeks. That is true. They also run uh, Corbin, Kentucky and <laughs> Salem, Virginia at least once a year, apparently. Mm-hmm. Big house show loop there. The, the old Corbin, Salem loop. <laughs> Corbin, Salem, Austin, Texas. <laughs> the big three. Unreal. Unreal. It's not as bad as like the 80s WWF schedule where legitimately I think they would just throw darts at a map. <laughs> <laughs> they would run like Portland one on a, on a Friday night and then they'd be in uh, Tampa on a Saturday night. 
and then they'd have a double shot in Philly and DC on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it's like who pl- who planned this? <laughs> it's insane. Oh boy. All right. The uh best of the super juniors tournament is going on in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I honestly don't care. <laughs> um Superstar Billy Graham passed away. We were talking offline a bit about his career. And uh, one of the more influential guys in the history of pro wrestling, mm-hmm. whether it be on Hulk Hogan, Dusty Rhodes, Jesse Ventura, Scott Steiner, any number of guys either stole promo material or the look or any number of things from superstar Billy Graham who had a very problematic relationship with WWE WWF um, post, you know, 1988 mm-hmm. all the way up until his death. And uh, he had been in poor health for decades, decades and, de- and decades. Uh, but Billy, uh, unfortunately, and uh, succumbed this week. And um, I don't, he was before my time. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a whole lot to add other than obviously, if you know anything, you know that he was one of the more influential guys in the history of wrestling. Do you have anything to add on, uh, on superstar? No, I think, I think that about covers it. Like you said, pretty much everybody that came after him in that era took a little bit from him, you know, the, the Jesse's and the, and the, and the Hogan's and flares and everybody like it. Yeah. It's and like, and you kind of pointed out, he kind of cut a swath through everywhere that, you know, he did the AWA and then he went to New York and then he ended up in, and, and then he ended up in working for, you know, Crockett and it's like, right. so, so did everybody like he, he cut the path and then, you know, everybody, including Hogan and whoever else kind of followed that, that system. I mean, it was the territorial system as it was, but um, yeah, he was, it's, it's a weird thing. I think for a lot of things because of the way WWE has curated their history, that wrestling didn't start until uh, you know, Hulk Hogan won the title from the iron cheek. Right. Uh, you don't hear as much about the, the Billy Graham's and you, you know, until, until they would come back into the fold like Billy Graham did in uh, he when he was inducted in the Hall of Fame and they did a DVD for him and yeah. you know, sim- similarly to when when Bruno finally came back to the fold in 2013 or whatever that was so yeah yeah it's it's hard to get a grasp on that if you're if you're not a fan who was around in that era but like you said the evidence is go go look up a couple of clips of him in his promo and see how many lines you recognize that you heard Dusty Rhodes or Hulk Hogan say later. Right. And the the look, I mean, he, he was, I don't know that he was the first guy in wrestling to use steroids. Mm-hmm. He was definitely one of the first guys in wrestling to use steroids. Yeah. And you could probably attribute a lot of the chemicals that he was putting in his body from the early 1970s on, <laughs> at yeah. least through the late 80s to a lot of the health problems that he had later in life and why his body started breaking down in the uh, mid eighties. Um, he came back to the WBF for one, it was supposed to be one final run from like 1986 through 1988. And if you go watch some of the primetime wrestlings that are on Peacock or the WWE network um, from that era, they do like he I think he broke his I don't know if he broke his hip or they just realized that he needed a hip replacement, but they did like an injury angle. And then it was all the superstars working back to health and they would do a like a two minute video package on every week on primetime wrestling showing the superstar, you know, doing leg presses or whatever, trying to get back to health. And then he just he did come back and do a couple matches after that. But mm-hmm. As far as having one last run, his body just couldn't take it anymore. He came back then. I think he broke his ankle, but they turned that into it 
into another injury angle where Greg the Hammer Valentine put him in the figure four leg lock and broke his ankle. <laughs> um, and then uh, Greg the Hammer would use, uh, that would become part of his gimmick. He wore a shin guard, which was supposed to somehow help with leverage in a figure four <laughs> leg lock, but had like a broken bone on the shin, painted on the shin guard. And it's like, well, that was from an angle of Superstar. Oh. And, then they made, and then they made Superstar a, uh, a car commentator, which he was not great at. And a baby face manager for The Rock, Don Morocco, <laughs> who was already on like his last legs as a WWF guy at the time. And Superstar, um, Superstar just he he was wildly miscast as a baby face manager. But <laughs> uh, regardless, that's uh, that's kind of my my memories of Superstar Graham. So anyway, not that that's important, but um. Billy Graham passed away. So uh, WWE is continuing to build to Night of Champions in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia coming up next weekend. They will have Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles to crown a world heavyweight champion. Cody and Brock rematch. Kevin and Sammy versus the bloodline of Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. I like that match. Gunther versus Mustafa Ali for the Intercontinental title. Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Two SmackDown stars wrestling for the Raw Women's title. Uh, and Becky Lynch is wrestling Trish Stratus on that show, which is uh, not listed on their Wikipedia here. They're having a contract signing on Raw for that match this week. So six matches so far for that, that show. Uh, what do you think of the... Um, Everything. The build <laughs> to the 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 World Heavyweight title match, the uh, Cody and Brock rematch, and Kevin and Sammy versus the other half of the bloodline. Yeah, I think um, it, it's it's been all right. I thought this week was a step in the right direction as far as I thought. I liked Becky's promo a lot. And hey, I... they let the best talker in the <laughs> business talk. Imagine that. <laughs> Yeah, surprisingly, yeah, I thought she had an excellent promo, and I thought, hey, Cody, Cody's promo was also very good. It's it's tough to do a rematch when the baby face has already won, but um, they're they're doing their best with what with what they're given, um, and yeah, I th- I think that's good. And you've got a you've got a new match with uh, with Kevin and Sammy against against Roman and Solo. I find the bloodline to be pretty boring without the Sami Zayn stuff in there. Sure. sure. So I'm, uh, I am ready for them to do something with that. And this will be the next step in that. Is it interesting that, or does it matter? It probably doesn't matter is the answer. Nothing they do matters because they're going to just make billions of dollars anyway, but that they're hyping up that Roman's about to hit a thousand days as champion. And he's not he's not going to defend his belt before he hits that mark again. I don't know what to make of that. And I guess I mean, I guess the answer is and the argument is, well, everyone knows he's not going to lose it to Omos or 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 whoever, whoever they would they would throw at him. Um, so why? I guess they can argue that why? Why do the match if you if the result is clear, but. I don't know. You could you could try, you know, making people believe that he could lose it to someone. You know, you could try, which is your job. Your right. <laughs> to make me believe that this guy can lose to whoever's challenging him. Um, so it feels like a little bit of a cop out to just go. Well, no one will believe that he's going to lose, so we're just not going to do a match. But I guess it doesn't really. Like I said, it's, it's just interesting to, on one hand, be holding him up as this you know record breaking champion and on the other hand uh you know not really making a big uh, a big final defense before he hits this thousand day mark that's apparently very important well he is uh he's not wrestled since wrestlemania <laughs> it's, it's very strange system they've set up here mustafa ali won a battle royal on raw sure <laughs> To become normal and contender for the Intercontinental title. Sure, why not? Will Will he last longer than Ricochet did against Brock in Saudi Arabia? I expect the match to go about the same. 
Okay. <laughs> Brock, I, I think Ricochet got zero offensive moves, mm-hmm. and Brock killed him in under two minutes, if I remember correctly. Correct. Yes, he was hilarious. Right. Yeah, and uh, Bianca and Oscar—that's a WrestleMania rematch. Only this time they're on the the blue shell, <laughs> but still fighting for the red belt. Currently, they didn't do the they didn't do the belt swap this year. At least I don't yet. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> They do this to themselves. Mm-hmm. No one is putting a gun to your head and making you do a brand split. No one is making you have a red belt and a blue belt and a red show and a blue show. You've done this to yourself. And then you <laughs> constantly break your own stipulations and rules that you impose on yourself. Classic. You could just not. You know? Yeah, you call the call these belts anything else. Make them, yeah. you know, don't have to color code them to the show they're on, you know? Like the, NX- the NXT belts aren't yellow, are they? No. One, they're, uh, the women's title has a white strap and has like this, uh, I don't know, the uh, an incandescent uh, 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 plates on it. I don't know how you say that or how best to describe that. Mm-hmm. No, they're not, they're not yellow. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like you have to do that, but they do it anyway. Yeah. NXT is uh, also running um, the same weekend. They're running at the same time, actually, as uh, as Double or Nothing. And uh, I know you don't watch the program, but the build for that show, Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker in a singles match for the NXT title. They've, uh, they did a double turn, Braun's a heel, and Carmelo's a baby face. Mm-hmm. So same match they did at their last pay per view. Just, uh, just they've swapped roles now. Um, we'll find out who wrestles for the women's title on television this Tuesday. It'll either be Roxanne or Tiffany facing Cora or Lyra. Gnome Dar versus Dragon Lee for the NXT Heritage Cup in a British rounds uh, match. Sure, why not? Dragon Lee's fantastic. Gnome Dar, um, I think if he were launched into the ocean, I think <laughs> I think I'd be happier than if he were on television every week. How, how is he the one like two hundred five live guy who somehow still has a job? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I watch his promos and I don't get it. I watch his matches and I don't get it. <laughs> like, is he somebody's nephew? That. Maybe the I Albert don't. secret ne- Scottish nephew, perhaps triple threat match for the North American title. Wesley, who's like Shawn Michaels favorite son versus <laughs> Tyler Bate versus Joe Gacy. So they're doing a um, Wesley and Tyler Bate are baby face friends. And Joe Gacy is like Satan. And he is uh, the devil on each of their shoulders saying, you should turn on your friend before your friend turns on you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and that kind of thing. So the implication here is Tyler Bate is going to go heel and cost Wes the North American title. But right now they're still friends. Mm. And then uh, last man standing, Ila Dragunov versus Dijak. And they did a, 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 sh- a series of segments on the Swiss NXT TV where Dijak apparently kidnapped Ila Dragunov <laughs> and was like, uh, uh, submit, uh, he was torturing him. <laughs> hmm. He was, it was like an interrogation slash torture series of, of torture segments. Absolutely bizarre. Uh, very unintentionally, um, erotic, <laughs> I think is another way to look at those segments. Um, match will be, match will be fine. But I I don't know about running this up against an AEW show. I mean, other than just they hadn't uh, they hadn't effed with Tony in a while. What's what's the what's the strategy here? I couldn't tell you. Could not tell you. And they're on the road in Lowell, Massachusetts. Oh, that <laughs> hotbed of, of yes. pro wrestling. Yes, absolutely bizarre. Anyway. Um, all right, so I think we've covered um, 
the globe that we usually cover here. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I did have one final thought going back eons in this punk saga. Um, when he when he had to get his receipt on hang on the hangar, um, you know, because he, he demanded apology and didn't get one, so he had to take matters into his own hands. Yes. Um, could could it be argued that the receipt was Hangman going out and losing clean to him on the pay per view four days after it happened? Yeah, you very you could uh, certainly uh, make that argument. Yeah. Okay. Just just something's been rattling around. <laughs> Like maybe 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 Punk already got his receipt by, you know, pinning the guy clean. But uh, you know, he 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 wanted it the way he wanted it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sure. What's the problem? Nothing. Just 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 something I've been thinking about. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Problem with CM Punk. (laughs) And I think there's just the one. (laughs) Right. Of course. (laughs) Just the one. Is that um, he's like the coolest wrestler of the last 20 years. True, true. Unfortunately, there's a lot that goes with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's infuriating. I'd like to congratulate my parasocial friend Trish Stratus, by the way, for <laughs> receiving the key to the city to Niagara Falls. Oh, wow. that's, uh, that's very cool. That's very neat. Yeah. She got the literally as it says in her entrance music, she got the key to the city. Well, there you go. Hey, they didn't redo they didn't like redo her theme with a terrible new version yet. That's that's at least promising. Yeah, they're still using Lil Kim, <laughs> but she's getting some checks off of uh, off of Trish in uh, in twenty twenty two. Sure. All right, uh, we wrap up. Uh, all right, everybody. Till next time, I meet. You. And Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories and more dishwashing on the wrestling of life. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <laughs> can cut like 70 percent of the the dishwasher yeah oh well, yeah 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 why not we'll, we'll figure it out what uh what, what yeah sure why not what's the problem you know yeah i don't think there's a problem you can just yeah do it do whatever you want mm-hmm. just throw stuff <laughs> Wait, is that good for the dishes? You know, I wouldn't think so. But yeah. uh, you know, who 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 am I to who am I to say? Uh... Yeah. You never know. You never know. It'd be okay. I try to keep on keeping on.